Now, what you're going to need for today, I should have said this at the beginning, you're going to need your towels. So remember these things you've been using for our movement sessions, towels, socks, if you have one of the official anatomy in motion wedges or a similar wedge shaped thing, that's great. I'd also like you to have a longer towel like this, something that you can tie around your ankle. So for me, this is my microfiber towel that came with my yoga mat. You can also use like a dish towel or a scarf, just something that's long and thin enough for you to tie around your ankle. And you'll see what I mean about that when we get to that part of the session. So is that everything I need to tell you before we start? As always, I have this massive <laughs> list of notes and no clue whether I am actually gonna follow the plan. Sometimes it's just better to improvise to let the good stuff that's in there come out. Anyway, I think we should just get started on this because there's a lot of things to do and I know you're probably tired of talking or listening to me talk and you wanna do something about your ankles. So let's check in. Grab your things. If you need to make notes, grab a pen or paper. Have your things close by. And let's begin the way that we, oh, I'll just move this out of the way. Why don't I? So let's check in the way we always begin. Be very consistent. Where are you feeling the pressure in your feet right now? And we're going to do this with the intention of also linking that back to the ankle in question today. Which ankle did you sprain that you'd like to investigate? Because if you've sprained both, let's just pick one for now. We can do the other one later. Just pick one if you've sprained both. I'm going to pick my left ankle because it seems to be the one that has some problems. So where's the pressure in your feet? And let's start to put these puzzle pieces together. Are you feeling more pressure in one foot or the other today? And let's ask, is that the ankle you sprained? So are you still holding most of your weight on the side of the ankle you sprained? Which is weird, right? If we injured a thing, there's two things you can do. You can move into it, or you can move away from it. Why would you be moving into it? I don't know. It's just curious to ask as a question. So first question, is the foot with the most pressures actually the side that you sprained? I always like to think about personality types, like some people when there's a problem and we're like, yeah, just going right into that thing. And some people are like, oh, there's a problem. I'm going to move away from that thing. Not saying there's any correlation, but I think it's interesting to think about. Now, next, are you feeling more pressure on the outsides or insides of your feet? And in particular, the ankle that you sprained. Where's the pressure, more on the outside or the inside? If it's more on the inside, you might be holding that protective pattern of closing down that ankle. If you're feeling the weight more on the outside, could it be that your ankle is still stuck more in that sprained position? It's not always so linear, but it's a nice place to start this inquiry. So get that information about your foot pressures. Next, just look down at your feet. I want you to identify whether one looks like it has a higher arch and if one foot looks like it's more flat and pronated. Just have a glance. For me, my ankle, my left one that I'm working with, it's more pronated, that foot. So the one that I've had the accident on, I'm not really putting my weight into it, and it's more pronated. So that's telling me I'm protecting this ankle. I don't want to go onto it. I probably need to teach it to move again a little differently. 
Now, let's do some movement assessments because that's what we're here to do. Let's find movement strategies to liberate the body. Let's first do our pelvis shifting assessment. So keep your knees straight and simply shift your pelvis all the way to one side. Get a sense of the range of motion. And then shift your pelvis all the way to the other side and get a sense of the range of motion. For you today, which way feels like you're more confident moving into? The side of the ankle that you sprained or moving away from the side that you sprained? So referencing back to my ankles, I feel like I'm shifting more comfortably to the right, which is away from my ankle in question. And when I shift onto my left foot, right away, I kind of roll over the outside of it. I, I just don't feel steady and I get blocked more quickly. I can't go as far and there's lots of stretching in my hip area. So I feel some ease. I can keep my whole foot on the ground when I shift to the right. When I shift my pelvis to the left, my foot rolls over the side and it doesn't feel very safe. What's happening for you? Next, let's look at some rotations in your pelvis. So block your shoulders and rib cage from moving and twist your pelvis all the way to one direction the right and then to the left. Observe the range of motion. How easy is it one way versus the other? And are you moving more easily towards the ankle spring side or away from it? So what I'm noticing, just to bring it back to me and the possibilities you might be encountering, I find it easier to rotate away from my ankle sprain side on the left. And when I rotate to the left, I feel blocked. I can't go as far. And my first metatarsal lifts off the ground. And what we know is for good foot mechanics as we walk, we should always be having the full tripod on the floor when the foot's on the ground. So if I'm losing my tripod, what's that telling me? I'm just rolling over the side of my ankle, telling me that this ankle might still be a little susceptible to re-accident. Okay, so what was happening for you? Rotation more easily towards your injury side or away from it? And are you getting some information right now about how this ankle might be still affecting things? in terms of which leg you trust more and how that might be playing out with every single step you take. Speaking of taking steps, we're going to use taking a step as an assessment. So it's very simple. Don't try to control this. Just take a step forwards and then step back and do it a few times on one leg at a time. So you're just taking a step forwards, letting your knee bend, getting all the weight in your front foot. Don't try to control it. And we're just seeing what happens when you take this faster step. First, does your heel, whoa, does your heel stay on the ground? Does your foot pronate well or whoa, like me, did you just roll over the side of your ankle? We're looking at your front foot, by the way. Does it feel like when you step forwards, your foot rolls in and your knee rolls in. So we're just looking, if we go at this faster speed, not trying to control anything, how are the mechanics? So I don't feel very confident about my mechanics personally. If I just stop here for a moment, the things that I don't really enjoy about this experience is that my knee is going in. I've got a little discomfort in my leg, my heel's coming off the ground, and my foot isn't pronated very well. I never said I was perfect, did I? I've got some stuff I'm working on too. So we're just checking the quality of that step forwards, pronation, leg mechanics. Try your other leg now and just see if that feels any different because this is kind of the speed at which we walk. We take a step forwards. We don't really think about it too much. So what I'm noticing is when I step forwards on my right leg, 
I have a much better tripod. My heel is staying down. I feel the pronation through my foot kind of rolling nicely. I don't feel like I'm just dumping in with my knee. It just feels generally more stable. I'm not falling over. See, I'm not falling over. I don't have any discomfort in my hip. This is the side I didn't sprain. <laughs> this is the side I did sprain. So it's taking, oh yeah, I really don't like stepping forwards on my left leg. So let's do that assessment again now, but looking at the back leg. So if I step forwards with my left leg, my first leg, I want you to pay attention to what's happening with your back foot. So we know that if the front foot is pronating, the back foot should be supinating. And in a supination, we want two points of contact on the back foot. So is that happening for you? When you step forwards, what happens to your back foot? When you step forward, does your heel lift off so completely that you've got nothing back there? When you step forward, does your back knee really bent? What happens? As you step forward kind of more quickly than you could control, how is the quality of the supination back there? Try your other leg. Just an easy step forward. What's the quality like? And you can go back and forth to compare what you're noticing. You might get different information about either of your ankles doing this, or even your knees. The knees are a good indicator. So what I'm noticing is when I step forwards on this side, my left knee stays a little bit more bent, and I lose my two points of contact. I'm not trying to control it or do anything. I'm just observing what's actually happening. And when I step forwards with my other leg, so my right knee stays straighter, and I feel more of the ball of my foot naturally stays on the ground. It's not as apparent as when I'm stepping and paying attention to my front leg. I got a lot of information from my front leg. So you might get more information about your back leg or your front leg. Take whatever you get and work with that. Now, the last part of our assessment here is we want to know, is the stuff at your ankle affecting stuff above? So I want you to think about two things right now that you know are kind of restricted or uncomfortable for your body, somewhere from the knees up. And we're going to test those things right now. They can be check-ins you've done in the workshop, or they can be other movements that you know are problematic for you. So for me, what I'm gonna test out is my neck lateral flexions because I know there's a difference here. When I go this way, I feel a really big stretch down my neck and it's not necessarily pleasant. And when I go this way, it feels like a block really fast. I don't know which side is going farther. I just know they feel different and uncomfortable in different ways. Now, the next thing that I know is a problem for me is my external rotation of my left arm, my left humerus, shoulder. So I'm going to do my external rotation and just get a general sense of how it is right now. And it feels a little cramped up back here in my scapula. I'm not, I'm not doing it very easily. I'm blocked and restricted compared to my right arm, which just goes so easily. So here's where we have the fun. I hope you've been able to find two things. You can do the same ones as me as you want if you don't know, and you can come back and have a, a longer think about this later and repeat this process. But we're gonna play around now to see if your ankle is impacting on your two movement assessments. So here's where you're gonna need your big towel. What you're gonna do, take your long towel that you can tie I want you to tie it around the ankle in question. So put it right around there and have it pretty snug. Okay, so just nothing rocket science, just tie it around and make sure it's, it's like an, a hug, like a comfortable hug around your ankle. Now let's try those two movements again. No expectations, just see what happens. 
So I'm going to do my neck again. Whoa. So that feels different going this direction. Do you remember when I said I was blocked going this way? I don't feel blocked anymore. I feel a new kind of stretch here on my neck. Interesting. Let's check the arm or my arm. You can check your other thing. I'm going to externally rotate my arm and it feels a little crunchy still, but wow, I have way more freedom. That's pretty cool. I, I didn't necessarily expect anything to happen. Okay. So let's see if there's another way of checking this out. So what you can do now is you can just, the ankle that you rolled over, or whatever, rolled in on, who knows, I want you to just roll to the outside of it like this. So you're putting all the weight on the outside of your foot and trying to get a, like a stretchy feeling on the outside of your ankle here. So all you're going to do is simply stand there and roll onto the outside of your ankle to open up the lateral edge. You can let the inside of your foot lift off, it's okay. Now holding this exaggerated inversion in your foot, I want you to try those two movements again to see if they feel same, different, worse, better. So here we go, I'm gonna do my neck, right and left lateral flexions, and that feels also much better than when I had nothing at my ankle. I'm gonna try my arm again, you know what, this feels even better than when I had the towel around my ankle. So my, my ankle clearly likes this opened up outside edge position. And if you think, if that's happening for you too, think back to when you observed the shape of your foot. My left foot's my more pronated foot, which means it's more closed on the outside of my ankle which might indicate that I'm protecting the outside of my ankle from restraining, but I might not be able to actually get that foot to open up and supinate well. So when I exaggerate this opening of the outside of my ankle, that actually helps things to free up, up the chain. So this might be part of my solution. Now we obviously want to check if the opposite is true. So, Let's take that same ankle and just roll all the way in on it, like really over pronate your foot, just dump in on it, put your weight in that foot and just roll right onto the inside. Oh, I already know I don't like this. <laughs> so I'm gonna test out my two movements again. My neck, oh, right away that just does not wanna go. If you can see from my facial expressions, I'm not enjoying this experience. Let's try my shoulder it feels a little blocked. Just holding my foot like this, I can feel my entire system like clench up like it doesn't like it. And I'm at a place with my body where I can generally get a yes and a no from it just by tuning into how it feels. So I knew already when I rolled into my foot, before I even checked my movements, I already knew I wasn't gonna like that. So I hope that gave you a bit of information about how your ankle is potentially impacting something up the chain. And if you didn't notice any correlations here, it might not be a problem for you, or we haven't found the connection that exists in your body. So I encourage you to play with that process a little bit. Now, of course, we want to know what the heck do we do about this? So what I'd like to do next is take you through five movements, five exercises to help give your ankle an experience of movement again. 